Hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the series on Snowflake Native Applications. This is going to be our first video wherein we are going to play with some code. We are going to build a Snowflake Native application from the ground up. We are going to deploy the application. We are going to test the application. Let's dive over to VS Code. So what you see on my screen is a folder structure of native application project that I have created out here. Let's go through the folder structure a little bit. So you see a file called readme. You see a file called manifest.yml. You see a folder called scripts and Python. Now, I think uh, before we look at or double click on each of the files, let's go over to the documentation page and understand the workflow a little bit. Now that we are on the documentation page, let's look at the development workflow. Now if you look at the workflow, there are total about 11 steps. Now for the very first application that we're going to build, we're not going to follow all the 11 steps. We're going to follow the bare minimum. So let's start with number one. Number one talks about creating the setup script. Now this is the script wherein you're going to write all your business logic. That means you're going to write all your search procedures and functions. The manifest is a place wherein you mention what all the different artifacts your application is going to contain. Now it can have a readme file, it can have a setup file. Now, as of today, we can have only one setup file. Even if you have tens and uh, 20s of uh, stored procedures that needs to be written all those needs to go into a single set of file um, You can mention all that in your manifest You upload those onto a name stage. It is very important because a stage is Going to be a wrapper for all your application business logic You create an application package and then from the application package, you create or finally your application. Versioning, we will not see today. Um, sharing content, we are not going to look at it today. Adding a business logic, yes, we will see it because anyway, we are creating a short procedure. You can create an external function, but and in this particular video, we are not going to talk about external functions. Logging and handling, these are optional. Release directive is optional. Testing an application, yes, we will definitely finally uh, you know, create the application from the application package and we are going to test it out. Let's head over to VS Code once more and let's look at our first setup. Now over here what you see is I have a simple stored procedure which returns hello world once executed successfully which is called hello. Now, on line number five, what are we doing? We're creating an application role. Now, when this application is installed on the customer end, it needs a role based on which it is going to execute. So this is the role which is going to drive the execution on the consumer end. App public is the role. We are creating a schema. Now you can have multiple schemas. For the time being, we are going to go ahead with only one schema which is core now this particular role should have usage permission on the schema that we just created that's what it is doing in line number eight at the same time this particular role needs to have execute or usage permission on the stored procedure we just created that's what it is getting done in line number 18. fair enough we're all set to execute the setup.v1 on the consumer end and create an application out of it. Let's go over to VS Code. I think the application package and the application are already created, but that's fine. We will rebuild it again. Because anyway, before coming uh, over to this particular video, I was executing the code once. Um, so that's when the package got created. So this, so what we're going to do. Um, okay. 
So you have the native app developer role and the native app developer role needs to have few permissions. The first permission is to create an application package and the second permission is to create an application itself. The warehouse already exists at this point of time and now we are going to create the application package. Um, so let's do something. Um, let's create the application package or let's 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 do this drop application package this if exists if exists right now this particular statement is true so the application package which is already created it's going to be dropped Fantastic. We recreate the application package. At this point of time, what do you see? Yeah, the package exists and there's an information schema and the public scheme. We're going to create a stage and we are going to upload all our uh, program artifacts onto that particular stage. So if I go to application, I can see our package exists. Now here is the app. I'm going to uninstall the app. Right? Something is wrong. Done. Let's head over to the data. We're going to go here under schemas. I'm going to create a schema. Let's say stage underscore content. Under that schema, I'm going to create a stage, a snowflake managed stage name and app underscore stage so this is the stage which is going to contain all the code artifacts once the stage is created it's time for us to upload all the documents right let's go ahead and start uploading so i'm going to upload the manifest i'm going to upload the readme I'm going to do open and these two files should be at your root location. What next? You will have to upload your setup. Setup is within your script folder. What happened? Did the upload not work? Should have worked, right? Upload. Let me refresh. Yes, it's done. If I go to scripts, I can see my setup underscore v1. So now my application package is created, all set. What is the next step? I'm not going to create a version as of this particular video. So the next step is to create the application straight out of the package. Let's go here. Uh, our first application, it does exist. So I'm going to execute this and drop it. And the next statement calls it out. Okay, fine. Before I create the application, let's look at our stage. I think we are... What was the schema we got created? Stage underscore content, right? Yeah. These are the files we got created. Uh, manifest, readme, and then other scripts. Fair enough. Now, we're going to create the application from the content which is uploaded onto the stage. Something is wrong. Yeah. So at this point of time, you will see that the application has been created. There's a folder called core. Under core, there's a procedure called hello. Now, if I go to the other window, 
if I go to my applications, what will you see? You see, there's an installed version of the application already present here. Right. Let's go ahead and test the application. So we're going to call the suit procedure, our first app dot core dot hello. Let's execute this. Hello, Snowflake. Fantastic. Before we end, there's something very, very interesting out here. Now, if you remember, I think in the last video, we spoke about application code security. So me as a provider, I am always apprehensive about my code security. The IP of my code is maintained or not is a question that I always have in mind. Now, the application framework is so intelligent that the application framework will never allow the business logic to be visible to the consumer. So if you see this particular setup had a business logic. What was the business logic? Just to print hello world on successful execution of the stored procedure. If I go over to the application which I just installed now for simplicity, we are not using a second account as my consumer in the same account we are installing the um, the application and we are using it as a consumer so if you go to hello if i go to definition i'm not able to see it because at this point of time i am trying to look at hello should proceed here as a consumer and you see something went wrong i'm not able to see it but if i want to see it i will have to go to my application stage i will have to look at all the stage files and read it from there right so we created our very first native application we saw how the provider IP is uh, maintained within snowflake application framework we installed our application on the same account and we tested it out it works absolutely brilliant this brings us to the end of this exciting video if you think that this particular video has really helped you, please do not forget to like, share and subscribe. I'll be happy to hear back your comments, your feedback in the comment section. Thank you very much and see you in the next lecture.